Zori Bliss. It is a difficult time for scoundrels to remain neutral in the war between the First Order and the Resistance, and Zori Bliss and the Spice Runners of Kijimi must soon take the side. Hello and welcome to Centurion's Corner and today we're reviewing Zori Bliss. Now I can't really say much about this character, I've only seen the film twice. Um, she's kind of one of the new bounty hunters, mysterious kind of characters that have been put out there. Uh, obviously we know that she was kind of with Poe at some point. Um, but that's about it. I mean my impressions from the character actually, I quite liked her from the movie. I thought she was in the film just enough. Uh, she portrayed quite well and there's that added mysterious still really to that character that I suppose is going to go into the comic worlds and stuff like that so she's pretty cool and I quite like the armour as well it's kind of like space meets Egyptian meets pirate in a kind of weird way um, but yeah I thought she was, she was kind of like a, a good character and I'm quite glad that they brought her out as a figure actually so anyway here she is in a blister pack um, We've got this sort of pencil drawing down here again. Um, yeah, it kind of looks like her, I suppose. Just looks a bit odd. Looks a bit like a Power Ranger. Uh, we've got our two pistols here. Um, but again, in the film, I only see her for a glimpse. I don't even know what her pistols would look like. And on the side, we got she's Zori Bliss. Just on this side, she's number 103 in the line. And on the back is that picture again. With her bio. So without further ado, let's just crack this bad girl open. Right, so here she is in a blister pack. Really not much to really go on. I mean it's just her two pistols that she has actually got. There's no hidden accessories or anything down here. So we'll take her out for her first impressions, take some pictures, and then we're going for the full review. Yeah, I'm kind of liking her actually. She's pretty cool. And um, she feels quite nice as well. And that's what I like about um, Hasbro. They do like the female characters quite quite well and do some justice to the figure. They don't feel a little bit too thin and a little bit too cheap on the side. But uh, yeah. Right, so we'll go away. We'll take some photos and we'll see you in a mo. And welcome back. So I've been away taking some photos and while I've been away I've actually fallen in love with this character. I actually think she's really nicely done. Um, for really I was a bit sort of skeptical getting this, these sort of sequel characters at the moment because I'm a bit like uh, the film was okay. I don't really sort of like the characters much you know she was only in it for a certain amount of times and I thought oh well I've got to get them because obviously it's the Black Series line. But Actually getting this figure out of the box and actually playing around doing a few photos and all that, really enjoyed her. And she's really surprised me. It's a bit like that Jane the Solo moment when getting that figure out. And um, yeah, she's just done nice. She's got just the right amount of like, accessories really. I can't even think of anything else that she really should come with. And there's extra little parts in there that's done quite nice. So for a sequel character that hasn't really been replicated in a character, like a, a figure before I think Hasbro's done really well so what we do we go with uh, accessories well, then we go for articulation and then we go over that all sculpt and um, yeah I mean so she comes with two accessories um, which is exactly the same is she gonna stand up yeah so no shame so it's like a flint lock kind of um, pirate pistol and it's all molded in a black plastic and then we've got this kind of nice little energy red detailing on the side here and then all the way around we have this intricate kind of sort of gold trim and it's just done nice there's no color bleed on there and both pistols are exactly the same so it's done really nice and they fit into a holster on the side 
and um, she's kind of like a piss to this, so they're sort of like the other way around so she can really flip them out really quickly. But just looking at this kind of design there on the, the um, belt as well looks really nice. She got two trigger fingers so she can actually hold them nicely in both hands. So that's done really nice. And also her visor is removable. So as we saw in the film, it, it lifts up or goes down or one way or the other. And um, yeah, so her eyes have been sort of nicely replicated there with the Hasbro on the tech there for face paint. And we've got an extra bit of detailing just inside as well with a black wash, which looks pretty cool. I did try lifting up the helmet just to see what they've done underneath. And uh, it's kind of like a human face, but with no uh, no mouth or nose or anything. So it's just the eyes there that's just been pushed inside the helmet. And just down the side of the helmet as well, there's two little holes where the visor has these little tabs. So we can just fit that in just nicely in there. And that's it. It's not see-through or anything. And it's just done in a black plastic. So it looks pretty cool. And for articulation as well, I mean, even though she's got a really big kind of helmet on her head, it doesn't get in the way. And actually, she's probably got really good sort of varied kind of articulation, really. And it really shows in the camera uh, taking photos and stuff. So she can look up this far. It's a bit like the Rocketeer. She can look down this low. We can do left and we can do right. There's a little bit of a swagger in there as well, so you can get a nod and all that about. And she's got the lower neck movement as well in there, which is really nice. So our shoulders can come up to this far, obviously hindered by this. We have got rotation, but again, hindered by the collar. Um, we've got the swivel at the elbow, and then it gives you a little bit more than a 90 degree. We've got a rotation at the wrist, which is also on a hinge. And then we've got the waist swivel, and we've got a little tiny bit of a crunch, but not much. And back can go a little bit further. Our legs can kick right up and they can go this far back. We've got an upper thigh rotation. We've got a double jointed knee. We've actually got a swivel at the boot as well. And then we've also got the rocker and a pivot at the ankle. The only thing I would say about this character is her boots are a little bit hard for her to sort of stand on. Because obviously the shape of the foot, it sort of um, it confuses you a little bit at first when you're trying to sort of like stand her up, and they are quite narrow as well, and quite thin. So posing her, you have to kind of get a little bit used to just with her feet. And um, once you get the sort of balance and all that, it's not too bad. But then going through that, we go through a kind of sculpt and all that what we've got going for this figure, and it's really done, really nice. So we start at the top of the helmet. We've got all the sort of like circuit boards and stuff on there. And it's got a nice kind of black wash over the bronzy gold colour. And um, yeah, it just looks pretty cool. It's all under the helmet as well. And on the sides. And on the back of the helmet. So it's just done. Just really well done, I think. It's just, you know, all the details are on there. And it's pretty cool. And then we've got this kind of collar thing around here, which kind of reminds you a bit of Cleopatra or Pharaoh from Egypt. Same with all the sort of like the gold kind of sort of accessories, really. Uh, and then the sort of thing, we've got all the ribbed kind of this and the sort of flight suit and then the gold around on there. And even in the side, it looks like it's got like hieroglyphics and stuff. And even in the smaller parts here, it's done quite nice. And the belt, I'm literally blown away with it. I think it looks amazing. So you, as you can see, all the detailings in there and the belt buckle and even in the leather belts as well we've got that kind of sort of um, hieroglyphics kind of sort of carrying on and that goes down into the holsters as well and it's just yeah I just think really like for a character that probably didn't need that much detail I think they've really gone to town on her and obviously we've got the clips and the rivets of the back of there for the holding the holsters in place which are glued in so they are a little bit hindered on a sort of um, upper fire swivels but it's not too bad um, and then going down to the boots, which has got the pirate boots with this sort of like the folded backness on there with the high kind of sort of heel step on there as well. So, yeah, I mean, as you can tell, I'm actually really quite like this character and it's come from the new movies as well. And um, yeah, I think to be honest, she's probably one of my top characters. I didn't even realize that I liked, which is a bit strange until I got this one out of that box. 
Um, at the moment, I got her from Star Action Figures for 18.95, as she's from the current line, and yeah, I think she's pretty cool. I mean, obviously, if you're not a full collector of Black Series or you don't collect the sequels and stuff like that, but I think if you do have a Bounty Hunter shelf, I think she's kind of worth a pickup, to be honest. And obviously, if you're an avid collector of Black Series, you're going to get her. But um, and then as an action figure, I think she's superb. So, guys, that's been my review of Zori Bliss. Uh, you can comment down below, you can follow me on Instagram, you can like the video, you can do all those other parts as well, and I always respond to everyone. So guys, girls, thank you so much, and I'll see you next time. Bye.